Hey, it's Chris. Welcome to another iPad apps video. These have become staples of this channel. Hallmarks, people look forward to these. They get so much out of them. They're excited, like when's the next one coming? And I know it's been a while, but here we are. And today I'm focusing these apps on helping you have a better Safari experience. It actually wasn't all that long ago that Apple said they'd be bringing extensions to Safari on the iPad. Previously, extensions for Safari only lived on the Mac side of things. So I'm really excited that we're finally getting some solid extensions coming to Safari on the iPad. Of course, the problem always is finding the stuff that's actually worthwhile. And that's where I come in. I've already weeded through everything and I'm here to present my top Safari extensions. The first extension I wanna mention is called Amplosion. And what it does is very simple and very appreciated. It redirects AMP pages, which is a Google product, to their normal, regular full page. So hold on, what's an AMP page? You run into them all the time. Anytime you do a Google search, you're likely to encounter an AMP page. An AMP page is a product that Google came out with to help publishers still be able to serve ads while also speeding up the page load times. But here's the thing, on an AMP article, there's no reader view. So I can't nicely format things, get rid of the ads and just enjoy whatever it is that I'm reading. And the best part about it is that it's super easy to use. So you even get a dashboard so you can see your stats, you can manage your settings, which means you have an allowed list. And every time that you visit an AMP site, Implosion is automatically going to activate to de-AMP that page. But if there's a publisher that you feel strongly about that you really want to support, you don't want to block their ad revenue, you can go ahead and add them to the allow list. Now I'm going to warn you, it's $2.99. A lot of people are like, why don't you just include free apps? That's not how it works, right? Good stuff's worth paying for. And in my opinion, this is a great app. All right, the next extension that I'm super happy to share with you is called Mapper. Now, it may seem like I'm just after Google in this video. And I promise, I'm not. There's some Google things that are really cool. I just covered the new Pixel 6 Pro the other day. But look, I really hate it when I do a Google search and an address or something pops up and I would like to see it in Apple Maps because I've kind of migrated myself that way. It's been better and better and better, you know, every year and I've gotten used to it and I don't do anything with Google Maps anymore if I can help it. But I find something, I click on it and it goes to Google Maps and it drives me nuts. And this plugin does one thing and one thing really well, and that is redirect those links from Google Maps to Apple Maps. I dislike Google Maps so much that I've actually been copying and pasting those addresses that I find into Apple Maps, which just adds some headache, some hassle. It's not fast and quick and efficient and easy, or at least not as much as it should be. And this literally just handles that for me. So I love that. But the whole thing would be pointless if it was slow or didn't work well. And I'm happy to report that it works really well and it's very fast. I think this one falls under the category of it's a small change, but it's a change that's gonna make a big difference if you interact with these mapping apps very often. And I think once you get it installed, you realize how much more often you actually do interact with the map apps than you realized. You know, I think for a lot of you, this plugin could become just as essential for your everyday browsing as Paperlike is for working with your Apple Pencil. It's that good. Now look, this one's 99 cents, so it does cost you something, but if, like for me, this has been a pain in the butt for you for a while, 99 cents is so worth it. All right, the next Safari extension that I wanna mention is called XSearch for iPad. And you know what? This one actually is sort of Google related or anti-Google related too. I didn't realize the thread here <laughs> through all of these until I really got into this. But what it does is it lets you switch search engines almost instantly, which is useful for several reasons. Now, I would say personally that the Google search results tend to be often the most satisfying, meaning that it's a really good search engine, but Google search results are also super frustrating. Why? Because they're jammed full of ads, number one. It takes a long time. You gotta do a lot of scrolling before you hit your actual first organic search result. And number two, it's littered with things like AMP articles. We already discussed that. And number three, and the list really does go on, but there's privacy concerns to be considered, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there are times when you might just wanna skip the open internet search and search eBay directly, or use DuckDuckGo, 
or maybe search Wikipedia and nothing else. And what's cool is that there's some shortcuts that you can set up here to make that switching in between search engines really seamless and easy. So for instance, if you wanna use Bing for search results, which you're probably thinking, why would anybody want to do that? Well, one use that I've found is for images because Google has made it so you can't download an image from its really excellent and powerful image search results. So with Bing, I've found that, hey, at least I can find images and download them to use. Now there's lots of things support on here, ranging from searching ESPN to GitHub to IMDB to Amazon, of course, that's probably something you search quite frequently. So you could use Google for certain searches where it makes sense. You could use something else when that makes sense. When you need to look up that weird medical condition that you don't want Google knowing about, you could open up DuckDuckGo and figure out what you need to that way. Hey, before we go any further, it's time for me to remind you to hit subscribe if you're new around here. If you're liking the vibe of this video, if you like iPad app content, there's always something good coming up around the corner here on this channel. So get yourself subscribed. And if you are new around here, make sure to check out our apps that make the iPad Pro worth owning series. I'll link up a couple of those down below. All right, the next plugin that I wanna point out is called Page Screenshot for Safari. That's the name and it's pretty self-explanatory. But in case you haven't grasped it yet, what it basically is, is a way to screenshot an entire website. Really simply, really easily, nice and professionally with a very easy export. Yes, the iPad's built-in screenshot functionality works really great. You can drag up from the bottom left corner with your Apple Pencil to make a screenshot. That way you can mark it up and send it. But when you wanna capture more information without having to take multiple screenshots, what do you do? Well, you download this Safari extension, Page Screenshot for Safari, and your life becomes a lot simpler, easier, more enjoyable for this particular task. And it makes it really easy. It just adds a little camera icon up in the URL bar, and you can have an option to capture the visible page or capture the full page. You can capture from the top. You can do a max height of five scrolls, right? So here's what's visible, that's one scroll. Here's what's visible, that's scroll two, three, four. So you can set limits. It's pretty interesting. And you know what? This developer actually makes a few other interesting apps as well that are not part of this video. One of them being dark mode for Safari, one that's auto translate for Safari, one that's highlighted for Safari. That one's actually kind of interesting because it lets you permanently highlight content in your browser. So now that Apple's quick note functionality is here, especially for iPad users, I'm not sure how many people would end up using that, but I guess that's worth throwing in here too, this highlighting app, because it lets you do just that, highlight text, you can add notes, you can annotate any web page directly into the Safari browser. So you don't have to open up your notes app to view those highlights, to view those notes. You can actually just access them by going to the website and they're permanently embedded there. That's pretty cool actually. Okay, now I saved a really good extension for near the end of this video to reward those of you who stuck around for a little bit extra and it's called HyperWeb and it's really like an all-in-one plugin. So it doesn't do just one thing specifically, it does several really cool, nice and useful things all in one shot and actually automatically. So as you're browsing, it will suggest different enhancements to your browsing experience to make things work better for you. Things like what? Well, it can do some ad and tracker blocking. That's always good. If you're a Safari user and you haven't switched to Chrome or something else, there's a good chance that you actually care about privacy. But one thing I really like about this plugin is that it lets you open certain links in certain apps. Probably one of the coolest features though is that you can inject custom CSS into the websites that you're visiting. And there's some really cool enhancements that you can do that way. Number one, picture in picture. You can re-enable picture in picture for videos on sites that disable it. Also video related when it comes to injecting custom CSS on sites is the ability to stop auto playing videos. I have a feeling a lot of people are really gonna like the auto clicker here. Well, what is that? What it is, is a way to automatically disable things like pop-ups. Honestly, this one does so much, I'm not gonna be able to cover it all here in this video. For instance, you can set it up so it can display some archived versions of a site that you're visiting. If you wanna compare what's there now to what used to be there. Anyways, this one's free to download, but it does have a $1.99 a month subscription. So it's really gonna come down to how much value you could ever see yourself getting out of this. I know subscriptions are getting pretty cringy lately. They're just everywhere and people are just like super sick of them, I get it. And last but not least, we have an extension called Cookie Cookie, and it does something very simple. It cuts out those really annoying 
can we use cookies to track you notifications that are popping up all over the place, thanks to GDPR. Those can be gone now with this extension. This is one of those extensions that you're gonna set and forget because when it's doing its job, you're not gonna notice those annoying things popping up anymore. You're just gonna be browsing the web happily, a little bit happier anyways. Well, there's really nothing else to say other than make sure you're following at Daily Tech, spelled daily T-E-K-K -K, on Instagram and Twitter. That would be good to do. And also just say thanks. Like, thank you for watching this content, for commenting, you know, for being involved, uh, for the feedback. You guys are awesome. And I'll catch you in the next video. Later.